Hey everybody, what's up? This is Al Bears with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service Southwest Region. You're listening to Shop Talk. He's not very big for a grouse, but what he lacks for in size, he more than makes up for with his impressive dance moves and vocals. He's the Atwater's Prairie Chicken. In April, about 300 people came to see the males of this barred grouse inflate his yellow air sacs and shimmy back and forth for his annual mating ritual, celebrated at the festival and National Wildlife Refuge bearing their name. There are only a few dozen of the chickens left living in the wild, mostly at the refuge near Houston. They once numbered about 1 million birds throughout the coastal grasslands of modern-day Texas and Louisiana. Like most endangered species, their numbers have been shrinking over the past century due to habitat loss. In more recent decades, the expansion of invasive red fire ants to the southeastern U.S. has dealt a near final blow to this prairie chicken subspecies. By spring of 2014, they numbered around 100 left in the wild. In the spring of 2016, flooding wiped out an entire generation of nests and eggs. The next summer, in 2017, Hurricane Harvey spelled further disaster. The heavy rains drove the birds, along with their predators, to the remaining slivers of dry land. A few who remained were gathered up by biologists and sheltered at the Houston Zoo. They've since been repatriated to the refuge. So far, 2018 has been stable, and the Atwaters Festival attendees weren't disappointed this year. To get a deeper look on the recovery science, today we're talking shop with Mike Morrow. He's a U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service biologist at the Atwater Prairie Chicken National Wildlife Refuge in Eagle Lake, Texas. He earned his Ph.D. studying the Atwaters. Along with other partners, Mike's charged with the daunting task of recovering a bird whose wild population is heavily dependent on captive breeding and sheltering in zoos. The Atwaters Prairie Chicken is um, essentially functionally extirpated from the wild and so we have several captive rearing facilities at several zoos across Texas that rear Atwaters for release back into the wild. We're releasing birds onto Atwater Prairie Chicken National Wildlife Refuge and uh, private ranch land. Less than 3% of Texas lands are public and less than 1% of the Atwaters regional habitat, the western Gulf coastal grasslands, remains pristine. Thus, cooperation with private landowners is the main hope for the recovery. The Atwater Prairie Chickens currently occur in two locations in Texas. Right now, one is here at at the Atwater Prairie Chicken Refuge, uh, where I work. Um, The other is on uh, ranch land in Goliad County, Texas. Being able to work with landowners interested in restoring Atwater's population is critical to the ultimate goal of removing the outwaters from the endangered species list. Most of Texas is in private land ownership, so without the help and assistance of private landowners, recovery of the species, which is emblematic of healthy tall grass prairie, without the help of landowners, recovery of of the outwaters simply wouldn't be possible. And therein lies the real challenge. Private parties can be skeptical about lending their livelihood to public conservation efforts. However, what's good for the Atwater's prairie chicken is also good for cattle ranchers. Atwater's are residents of a good quality coastal prairie habitat that once occurred on some 6 million acres along the coast of Texas and Louisiana. However, right now it's been estimated that much less than 1% of that 6 million acres remains. One of the early pioneer researchers that did a lot of research on Atwaters in the late 30s and 40s, stated that it's upon the existence of adequate prairie habitat that the welfare of the prairie chicken depends. So prairie chicken management basically is synonymous with prairie management. So there's several things that landowners can do that would benefit not only Atwaters, but probably their ranching and cattle operations as well. Ranchers that manage their native prairie grasslands using sound range management practices are already practicing prairie chicken management. So what do I mean by that? Prairies in this part of the world are, and in general, are a very dynamic ecosystem. They evolved with various disturbances that 
maintain these areas as grassland. If the prairies aren't disturbed in some way, they will eventually grow up into brushlands and ultimately forests. So things like grazing and periodic fire are important to maintain prairies, but the key is to apply enough disturbance to maintain the open prairie landscape, but not so much that the characteristic grass species are eliminated. Cattle have that in common with the atwaters. They prefer grasses. So keeping out invasive brush and trees is good practice to provide forage for ranching. The chicken prefers the grass for an unobscured view. And they really depend on that wide open landscape to detect predators so that they're not ambushed. They're very strong flyers and can outfly just about anything on, on wings. Atwaters management is something that private landowners can and do on their own. You know, that can mean cutting brush, treating with herbicides, treating with prescribed fire, or a combination, all of the above. Those kind of practices, you know, not only improve the prairie for prairie chickens, but, but also result in increased forage for livestock operations as well. More recently, Mike and his colleagues made a major breakthrough in Atwater's recovery. They discovered a major setback for the chicken, and it's something that causes trouble for pretty much everybody in the southeastern states. It's the red imported fire ant. The fire ant started to make a big impact on Texas lands by the 1960s. Mike and his team discovered that the ants compete with newly hatched chicks for insect forage, which was leading to chick starvation. They started treating the fire ant nests on the refuge land with insecticide. If we treated to reduce fire ants, we could increase uh, insect abundance by about 27%. But even more importantly, where we treated for fire ants, brood survival during that critical two-week post-hatch was comparable to historic outwaters uh, brood survival. So now we have a solution. Maintain the prairie landscape with moderate grazing and periodic fires. Remove invasive plants and ants. Things were going swell at the refuge, then along came two consecutive years of devastating floods on the tiny wild population. The workaround for a natural disaster is redundancy. The outwaters need more habitat so they can recuperate from future flooding, which happens periodically in this part of the world. To get this kind of population redundancy, we need more habitat, and this comes down to identifying more lands that can be converted back to native prairie so that these disaster events aren't so catastrophic to the population. A major roadblock to this is the native grasses have been replaced by introduced grass, which have higher maintenance costs in exchange for more food for cattle. A goal for conservation agencies is to highlight the economic viability of the native grasses. Native prairies have been used to support ranching operations throughout Texas history. Uh, Native pastures don't require a lot of uh, monetary inputs in the form of fertilizer and water to keep them productive, like these uh, so-called improved introduced pastures. Native prairies can't be stocked as heavily as improved pastures. It doesn't carry as many animals per unit of area as, say, pastures planted to introduce species like Bermuda grass. But the data I've seen suggests that when looking at the bottom line, native prairies are just as profitable as these introduced improved pastures because these native grasses have evolved with periodic droughts that are characteristic of prairie environments. Uh, native prairies are probably much more resilient to these kind of dry conditions than introduced improved species. The economic stability of private lands can be further enhanced through safe harbor agreements with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, which can protect landowners' operations. Landowners are oftentimes uncomfortable with creating habitat for a, a species that is listed. A program was developed under the Endangered Species Act. It's called the Safe Harbor Program, whereby landowners can enter into agreement to manage for the outwaters with the hope that the actions that they put on the landscape will result in an increase in prairie chickens on the property. However, as a part of that safe harbor agreement, landowners are only responsible for maintaining the baseline number of prairie chickens present when the agreement was signed. And for most 
remaining grasslands within the historic range of Atwaters, that baseline is currently zero. That gives the landowners some flexibility if they change their mind about their management in the future, and it you know relieves them from stress and worry over potential burdens that the endangered species or perceptions of burdens may impose if they do indeed change their minds and want to take management of the property in a different direction sometime down the road. Mike Morrow has been working with the Atwaters for several decades, and while recent years have been hard for the Atwaters' numbers, he's confident the recovery is on the horizon. I've been working with Atwaters for a long time, um, you know, more than 30 years if you count the time I was uh, spent in graduate school. It's been an, an incredibly frustrating ride at times, but I will say even with the setbacks that we've had, in the last two or three years with weather, I'll say, and I'm not just blowing smoke, that I feel more optimistic about the outwaters recovery now than I have for most of my 30-year career. Yes, the outwaters are in a tough spot now, but we think we now know what the limiting factor was that frustrated our efforts for so long. So we know what to do, and the data that we've been able to collect so far indicate that we're on the right track. Mother Nature has dealt us a drink of bad luck with the weather uh, in recent years, but that's not going to last forever. And I'm, I'm more confident than I've ever been that, you know, we're going to make some significant stride in the recovery of the outwaters in the not-too-distant future. I don't want to count the outwaters out yet. We're going to get there. That was Mike Morrow with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service Southwest Region. My name is Al Barris, and that's what's up.